Well, hey, hello everybody. I'm doing another uh, case here out of Chapter 12, and it is this uh, Santa Fe Independent School District versus Doe. Uh, this is not the same Doe as uh, Roe or any of those, but they use names like that when they're trying to protect somebody's identity. Uh, so, um, like uh, Roe versus Wade was the actual lady's name, but uh, they used a name to protect her identity. So, uh, Doe in this case is somebody they're trying to uh, protect their identity. Uh, so, basically, uh, we've uh, talked a little bit about this on a separate um, uh, post. I think Tim posted on this. Case is 530 U.S. 290, which is a 2000 case. And in that particular case, uh, there was a lawsuit filed because uh, Mormon people and a Catholic family were upset by the fact that the student council um, chaplain that they had on the student council was being allowed to deliver a prayer. And the school thought that the solution to this, uh, and this just shows you, for a bunch of educated people, they're pretty dumb when it comes to the law. Uh, but anyway, they come with this idea that we'll just have an open election about do we want to do this, we'll let the students decide, and uh, basically um, then we'll let them choose a representative for the sole purpose of giving these um, what they call non-sectarian, non-proselyzing prayers uh, before different athletic contests. Uh, and, you know, big one in uh, Texas is football. I mean, it is huge. And so, uh, similarly, in uh, like Santa Fe, probably um, would be um, uh, football. Uh, it, it's just my, just my thinking. So, uh, what, what we're looking at is that we had um, basically a student authorized spokesperson, but the point is that they knew that this person was going to be uh, uh, reading a prayer or giving a prayer, and this uh, was also going to allow this person to promote one certain form of uh, religion. And so these invocations were determined to be improper because they were, uh, you know, kind of guiding the child, guiding the student toward uh, giving these Christian prayers. Uh, and, you know, it's, I've said in the written comments that I put, is, you know, this is going on in Oklahoma City, which this stuff goes on in the Deep South all the time. Truthfully, it goes on in Indiana, too, but we get away with it because nobody... Uh, knows much about it. Um, we have the advantage of being the Alabama of the North. Uh, and so we're no really different than the Deep South and a lot of the things we do, but we get away with it because of the fact that we're in the North. Uh, one of the things that, uh, in fact, let me add something. The other day they were, and this happens all the time too, they were talking about something that was going on in the Deep South, and here they flashed a picture of these two guys being lynched on the courthouse lawn and I happen to know uh, that that was Marion, Indiana where this lynching was taking place because it's my hometown and my father was at that lynching. My father's like five years old and he's at this lynching uh, and so he's talked about it and, and you know he was scared and my grandmother was scared and of course my grandfather just curious you know so he wanted to know what's going on so he drags the whole family down there in like 1930 to just see what's going on. And that picture shows up all the time in especially books out of England or on the BBC or somewhere like that when they're trying to portray um, murder of blacks in the deep south like Alabama, Mississippi. And it gets used all the time, but it is from Marion, Indiana. Uh, so it's uh, interesting, uh, just to the extent that we get away with stuff in Indiana. So uh, the other thing here is that um, uh, what we're looking at is that if we change the whole nature of this, and we thought about it in the context of a student presentation, just a neutral student presentation. Like I said in my type comments, 
Um, what if a student was allowed, let's say the student was chosen, somebody different every week, maybe somebody had some literary ability, they got good grades in English, whatever, and you want them to give them a certain amount of recognition, you know, that before the football game they can get up and uh, make a few comments or read something or, or whatever. Like I said, I was, you know, asked to do this in, in, at the high school graduation, actually, and what I did was I just uh, basically read um, uh, some literature from great minds. I think it was Pope from England who was in the Parliament at the time of the American Revolution. So, um, you know, that's an option. Uh, if you're really sincere about saying, you know, we want to give uh, some time for reflection, um, uh, you know, you can use plenty of things other than prayer. So, say the student gets up and reads uh, Yellow Wood by Robert Frost, one of my all-time favorites. You know, two roads emerge from a yellow wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. I mean, that's perfect for students that are thinking about uh, graduation and moving on and uh, all these other uh, different kinds of things. So, basically... Um, what the court found in this is that it's just too tightly uh, entangled with the um, uh, Christianity and then the government is tying them too close together. And so basically it violates the Establishment Clause. And so this uh, thing that they're doing now uh, where they're just giving the student the freedom to decide what they want to talk about uh, is is a much better uh, option. But the downside of that is, I mean, you better hold on to your hats because students are liable to say just about anything. Uh, and so um, that that's part of it is that some places are just not doing it because they're like, well, we don't trust the students and uh, we want them to do a Christian prayer, but we can't make them. And, that, and that's what it's really supposed to be all about is you, you're not in a position to make a child do uh, something in regard to religion when, you know, basically what you're trying to do is uh, is give them an opportunity to, um, you know, uh, engage in the arts, engage, you know, for instance, you got a school band, you know, you've got other things like this. Uh, so give the person the opportunity to present something. It doesn't necessarily have to mean uh, that it has to be religious. It can be some other literary value. Now, in all truth and all honesty, most of these that I've ever seen where they really do it the way they're supposed to do it, the child gets up or the student, high school student gets up and they say a prayer. You know, they feel a, com a compulsion that they really need to do that. But it's different if it's coming from the child entirely. The child is making the decision. The child is choosing what to say. And to the extent that we can say that this is the child's decision, then it's all fine because the child has the right to pray in school if they want to. The child has never not had that right. It's just a difference between public prayer and private prayer. And so the issue then becomes, well, why do we necessarily need for this to be some kind of public prayer? Jesus even, and when you read any of his writings, he's, he wasn't that much in favor of uh, public prayer. Mostly people are just showing off. Uh, and so the whole idea that you can pray to yourself in private is, um, is I think, preferable in a, in a lot of ways. So what's really the point, I guess, is what I'm driving at. You can disagree. That's what I love about this class. I try to structure it that you guys can talk among yourselves or you can talk to me. I won't be offended. I, I honestly promise some of the ones that have had me before will, will tell you that, that I want to give you the opportunity to, here again, I'm all for freedom of speech uh, for everybody. Uh, and so I just don't want us to get all tangled up uh, in putting us, ourselves as a government in a position where it's going to be untenable uh, and um, it's going to be difficult. Um, for us to follow some of the, you know, basically rules or boxes that we've boxed ourselves into. So, hey, I hope you've enjoyed this a little bit. Uh, remember this and, and try to think of it in the context of that lemon test that we just talked about. 
Uh, we'll be moving forward so, with some additional uh, ones of these cases. There's about 10 of them. It's a little shorter chapter, but uh, there is a lot of good content here. So let's try to work through all these together. Uh, you can brief on one and comment on another, and uh, you should have plenty to talk about. Uh, thanks a lot. We'll be back with something else.